Good morning. I'd like to welcome all as we gather for worship at the Moravian Church. For those who are here and those who may be worshiping online with us, it is good to be together. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, please note that we are continuing to do collections for the uh, relocation of Afghan refugees down in Green Bay. There's a box out in the narthex. We will be uh, collecting until April 4th for that. Uh, one of the things, also I had a phone call, they're looking for bicycles. Um, and uh, they need to be in good shape, though. Um, and what's going to happen is uh, the different bike shops throughout the county will be uh, the places that you could take. If you have any bikes, I know I've still got some of my son's bikes sitting somewhere, um, but you, you can take them to the bike shops. They will get them refurbished and rehabbed. But this is going to be a very, very important thing. So, so if you have that available, you can take it uh, to the shop in town or the one up north, um, and that will be something that will be really appreciated. Also, uh, please note the bulletin to sign up for Easter lilies. Um, also, we will be getting more information to you uh, about the wonderful work that the Moravians are in the Czech Republic are doing to be welcoming Ukrainian refugees. Um, just some phenomenal things that they're doing in terms of being able to receive people, but also to set up schools for the Ukrainian children, and that's what Moravians do, and I'm just so proud of us. And so we're going to let you know what you can be doing to help support those efforts. Um, and also thanks to Chris Neville, who taught me the secret of how to be able to actually get a Ukrainian candle. So, way to go, Chris. Um, and today we will be offering prayers for our uh, Honduran mission team. They leave on Saturday uh, doing all kinds of things, uh, caring for patients as well as work at the clinic, uh, also work out in the communities. Uh, Rick just left yesterday, but we're uh, so grateful. We're so grateful to finally be back, able to do this work again. So I ask that you be keeping them in your prayers. And then finally, please uh, keep Dolores Miller, Miller in your prayers. Uh, she took a tumble and uh, 
is, uh, had some surgery and is recovering on a swing bed up at Door County Memorial Hospital. With that, let us prepare our hearts to be in worship. That is a surprise. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to do that. <laughs> what a call to worship. I can't tell you how many empty sanctuary recordings Reader and I would sit in those chairs and Dennis would be playing and we would be dreaming about hearing our choir. Let's thank God for those blessings. Please stand as we sing together our opening hymn number 782 in the Moravian Book of Worship.
please remain standing and turn to page 65. On this Sunday, as we do pray for our mission team, we are praying the liturgy for world mission. All your creatures, Lord, will praise you, and all your people will give thanks to you. They will speak of the glory of your royal power and tell of your might. Everyone will know your mighty deeds and the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Your rule is eternal, and you are king forever. You, Lord, are righteous in all that you do, merciful in all your acts. You supply the needs of all who honor you. You hear their cries and save them. We will ever praise you, Lord. Let all creation praise your holy name With sincere hearts and open minds, let us now acknowledge the sin that entangles us and prevents us from doing God's will. Compassionate Lord, you call us to a higher standard than we have received. We therefore bow in honest compassion of those thoughts, words, and deeds which have missed the mark. Within our families, we have loved him perfectly. Among sisters and brothers in the church, we have not fully walked in the light. Walked in our congregations diversity of people in our communities. In our witness to the world, our lives have not had 
there is no condemnation now for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. Hear the word of our Lord. I do not condemn you. Go, but do not sin again. Please stand. God created the heavens and stretched them out, fashioned the earth and all that lives there, and gave life and breath to all its people. And now the Lord God says to his servants, I, the Lord, have called you and given you power to see that justice is done on earth. Therefore, through you, I will make a covenant to all people. Through you, I will bring light to the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind. God shows no partiality to race or culture. All who have reverence for him and do what is right are acceptable to God. Let us praise God for his glorious grace for the free gift that he gave us in his dear Son. How great is the grace of God, which he gave to us in such large measure. This is the good news. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, all people may participate in God's blessings. We are members of the same body and share in the promise that God made through Jesus. There is no longer rich or poor, black or white, male or female, for we are all one in union with Christ Jesus. If we belong to Christ, then we are members of God's family and will receive what God has Please be seated. I will be offering offering a prayer specifically for our Honduran team, and then we will continue on with our traditional prayer for missionaries. Lord, this morning we lift up to you our mission team, those who are heading to the clinic in Awas. Lord, we are so grateful that we can be back doing this important work again as circumstances have kept us separated far too long from our brothers and sisters there. We pray today for safe travels. We pray for the best use of the resources that we will take to bring healing and comfort. We pray for each member of the team. Bless them for their commitment to do this work. We ask, Lord, that you will prepare the hearts of all involved to be together in fellowship, in worship, and in service. 
And in all these things, Lord, may you be glorified. And let us pray for our missionaries, light and desire of all nations. Watch over your messengers by land, sea, and air. Accompany the word of their testimony concerning your atonement with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. You know where they dwell and where they labor, and that they are running with perseverance the race set before them. Strengthen them in the hour of temptation and preserve them in times of danger and distress. Let them find comfort in fellowship and intercessions of churches, which has been the Lord and the Holy Spirit all. May the fire of your love I looked and there was a great multitude. No one could count all the people. They were of every race, tribe, nation, and language, and they stood in front of the throne and of the Lamb, holding palm branches in their hands. And they called out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who sits on the throne, and from the Lamb. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite the young people to come up and join me. Yeah, I like it. Only one customer. Oh, maybe got a few. Oh, here they come. All right. Good morning. Good to see all of you. So, oh, there we go. There's Laura. Hi. So, um, we prayed for our mission team. They're going to go to Honduras. Do you know where Honduras is? No. No, it's a long ways away. Trust me. Um, and uh, so, I thought I'd bring out one of our mission, one of the backpacks we take sometimes on mission. So, Honduras is down in Central America. It's a very warm place. So, what do you think you would want to pack in your backpack to go to Honduras? Sunscreen. What's that? Sunscreen. Sunscreen. Good call. What else? Lots of water. Yeah, lots of water is good. Um, bug spray. Yeah, yeah. Believe me, they got bugs down there that go on for days. Um, what else have we got? Oh, yeah. Food. Food. Food's good. Food's good. Um, ponchos. 
it, man, when it rains in Honduras, it knows how to rain. So, but some of the things, those are good things that you need to have when you go on a trip like that so you're ready for it. But then there are other things that, that our mission teams take with them when they go down. So, for example, we have a number of the staff from the hospital are going to be going, and I brought my first aid kit. They're bringing much better medical supplies. And while they're there, they're going to be treating people and taking care of people. In fact, um, people will be so excited because of the special uh, skills that they have to be looking after folks. So they're going to be doing that. So some of the other things we tend to take when we go on mission trips is tools. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to scare you out of that. But yeah. They, uh, we do work. We do work on buildings in the communities. One time, for years, we sent teams down, and they, they put up water tanks so that people could have water in their houses. But I'm going to show you the most important thing that we need to take. Um, when we go there, we are, we are in a partnership with our fellow Moravians that that's their home, and we are so grateful for that. So the biggest thing that we take to them is our hearts with love. Now, this is, I apologize, this is my Popeye loves olive oil pillow, but, but you get the idea. This is the most important thing. The most important thing is that we need to take our hearts, uh, open hearts, so that um, we can be in fellowship with them, and we're so grateful for, for our relationships with them. So one of the things that we love is that the day is going to come when you get older that you will have the opportunity to go, just as all the chil- kids that have gone before you, to go and serve in this way. And it, it is the highest calling we have as people of faith in the Moravian Church. So thank you for coming up. It's good seeing all of you. I'll see you soon. All right? Bye. Please remain seated as we sing together verses 1 through 3 and 6 of hymn number 45. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, 
leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, go tell that fox. I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather you, gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Years ago, we'd have potlucks in the basement, usually around once a month during the winter. And uh, folks would uh, we'd get together and they would put on a little program for when we had our fill of potato casserole and jello salads. And uh, as I recall, regularly we would be treated to a travelogue. Uh, now, this involved watching a slideshow that someone shared from some exotic location that they had visited. Um, the ones that stick in my mind that I remember well are <laughs> Lincoln Wickman, as he would share with us the most recent trip that he and Dottie had gone on. And I recall because he would in detail describe taking us from point A to point B to point C. And then Dottie would periodically correct him when he got his facts wrong, which was the best part of the travelogue. So those, for those of you who are not old enough, this is the kind of thing we did back then. That's how we learned about the world when we didn't have the internet or cell phones. People would go on trips and they would actually take pictures on 35 millimeter film and they would go to the trouble of getting them developed and they would organize them into some fashion and then they would share their in-depth impressions of faraway places and cultures where in a setting where people could actually sit and ask them questions. Sure ain't like a selfie in front of the Eiffel Tower, is it? That was a travelogue a description of where we went and how we got there and what we saw and what we experienced. Biblical scholars argue that the verses that we're reading today are smack dab in the middle of what they call the road to Jerusalem. Now, some of you really old people are thinking of Bob Hope, Bing Crosby movies right now. Well, this is the road to Jerusalem. It's kind of like a travelogue. Uh, this is part of a section that begins all the way back in chapter 9, and it goes all the way up to chapter 19. But it begins specifically in chapter 9, verse 51, where we are told this. It says, As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus turned his face to Jerusalem. Now, this is not a travelogue in a traditional sense. These chapters are not geographically organized. It's not an account of a traditional sense that Jesus went here and then he went there and he went there. No. It is a travelogue in the sense that once Jesus has turned his face to Jerusalem, every event, every interaction, everything that occurs from that point on must be understood as Jesus preparing himself and his followers for his ultimate purpose. The events of Holy Week and the cross at Calvary. Jesus turned his face to Jerusalem. Scholars also tell us these little verses, they're called a warning and a lament. I'll tell you the two themes that jumped out at me as I read this passage. Those two themes are resistance and sorrow. I am seeing resistance and sorrow maybe because of the circumstances we are currently experiencing in the world. The resistance is Jesus' refusal to back down to a tyrant. We certainly have a new appreciation for that right now, don't we? Jesus refusing to back down when the Pharisees show up and they bring in this threat that the all-powerful King Herod is going to kill him if he doesn't stop it, if he doesn't knock it off. Quit doing what you're doing. 
We are constantly getting reminders of resistance to tyrants to the people of Ukraine as they refuse against overwhelming odds to give in to the demand to give up and to surrender. Can't help but wonder where that courage comes from. I sat in awe this past week, the interview, a teenage girl. She was not fleeing into Poland at all. She was staying back. She was sewing camouflage shelters that will be used for those who are fighting. And she's so absolutely convicted that she would do whatever she could to continue to keep her country free. How often have we seen this courage, parents, children, grandmas, grandpas, unarmed, standing in front of tanks as this horror show continues to unfold and innocent people die? Where, where does such courage come from? I believe that one place such courage come from is moral certainty. The unwavering belief that the cause is right. That what one is willing to stand, and yes, maybe to die for, is good. Such confidence is not found in the power of arms, but in the power of troop, truth and in the hope of love. Resistance. Jesus is being threatened by all-powerful King Herod, and we need to be reminded that this is very personal to him. Herod has just recently executed his cousin, John the Baptist. But this is Jesus' response to that threat. Go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day when I reach my goal, in any case, I press on. You know, down through the ages, we have so many examples. Examples in our world, examples in the Christian community of, of the saints who resolved to do God's work and to do what was right, regardless of the cost. That traditional prayer we pray today of our missionaries We've been praying that for a very, very long time in the Moravian Church. And there are words in there that remind us of the price that has come for those who are willing to do that work. As Moravians, we only need to look as far as our spiritual founder, John Huss, who was martyred for his refusal to deny the tenets of the faith we still hold today. Or we think of Sister Rebecca and her fellow missionaries who were imprisoned for teaching slaves in the Caribbean how to read the Bible. The long list of resistance. There is a long list of resistance to those who would stand up to being oppressed and abused. I must press on. There is a high price to live in such a principled manner. Jesus' statement of resistance then is followed by a statement of sorrow, which is a lament for the city to which he is traveling, for Jerusalem. Sorrow is, the sorrow is over their refusal to embrace the coming reality of the kingdom of God that is Jesus' purpose to bring. No matter his resolve, Jesus knows that the end of his earthly road is Jerusalem. He speaks in, in a maternal fashion here. How I've longed to gather your children like a hen gathers her chicks in her wings, but you, you're not willing Jesus knows that regardless of how many people he heals, how many souls are liberated, how many eyes and hearts are open to the emerging reality of the kingdom of God, the outcome for him is still going to be the same. The cross, the cross awaits. I apologize this morning. This is not a feel-good sermon. Often in this world, Those whose cause may be truly just, those who stand for what is good in this world, may pay a terrible price for refusing to surrender and give in to the threatening darkness. But I'd ask that we keep in mind, we must keep in mind, that this is true as we witness atrocity after atrocity pile up in the Ukraine. I would offer you, though, two things that I would like you to take from this today. 
The first is when we witness the courage of those who are fighting a good fight in this world. We need to take inspiration. How easily do we surrender to the microaggressions of bitterness, hatred, bigotry, prejudice that we may encounter on a daily basis, but we, we really, and we don't stand up to it even though we really don't have anything on the line. We should be more determined to press into the places where we can bring faith, hope, and love into people's lives. So be inspired to do good in this world. And regardless of all these things, in our faith, we know that on Friday there is the cross, but on Easter Sunday, we know it's coming. God plays the long game. I know for myself, I keep the words of Dr. Martin Luther King in my heart at all times when I am so deeply saddened by the senseless violence and loss that I see in this world. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. So Moravians, hold out for justice. Labor for goodness. We have times in our world and in our lives that may feel empty and alone, and we are uncertain about what tomorrow may bring. But as I (laughs) sat there this morning during our call to worship, I was reminded, the choir will sing again. Amen. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, number 712. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and abide with you both now and forever. Amen.